So section five of chapter six is called graphing linear inequalities. Okay, so linear inequality is just like a linear equation. Those were like, you know, y equals mx plus b. It's just the equal sign isn't going to be an equal sign in this section. It's going to be a less than or a greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. What we're going to do in this section is check if ordered pairs are solutions and learn how to graph these things. However, given the unique situation we find ourselves in not actually being face-to-face -face, in terms of showing me graphs, I'm not going to ask that you do that because I know printing things could be very uh, challenging. You know, you might not have a printer, you might not have ink for your printer. Going out and buying that isn't exactly advised at the moment. So instead, I am going to show you how to graph them. But in the practice assignment solutions, which will be just a Google document, it won't be a video this time, I'm going to describe how to graph using words. And what I'm going to ask you to do is, for your assignment, I don't care if you want to print graph paper and graph them and submit that way, or if you want to type them out with words, but be aware that when your quiz rolls around, you are going to have to describe the process of graphing using words. So you'll definitely want to look over the practice solutions so you know what I'll be looking for on the quiz for 6.5 and 6.6. So the first thing we got to do is determine if an ordered pair is a solution. And all this is, is taking the ordered pair and plugging it in, taking those x and y values and substituting them in for x and y. Once we do that, we simplify, and we determine if we have a true or a false statement. So in the first example here, I'm given the ordered pair 7, 3 to check in the inequality y is less than x minus 1. The one thing you got to make sure is that you put the numbers in the right places. 3 is y, 7 is x, 7 minus 1 is 6. Is 3 less than 6? No. Oh. Yes. Sorry, it's 8.30 in the morning. I'm not fully awake yet. I haven't had any coffee. 3 is less than 6. So, yes, that ordered pair is a solution. For the next equation, 5 goes in place of y. 4 goes in place of x. Don't forget your order of operations. Okay, the 5 is going to stay a 5. On the right side, we have to multiply before we add. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. Is 5 greater than 14? Nope. That ordered pair is not a solution. So now we're going to check 4, 5 in the inequality y is less than x plus 1. So 5 is y. 4 is x. 4 plus 1 is 5. Is 5 less than 5? No. That's a strict inequality, and 5 is not less than itself. Over here, we're going to put 1 in for both x and y. So is 1 greater than 1 minus 7? Well, 1 minus 7 is negative 6, and a positive number is always greater than a negative number. So yes, that ordered pair works there. Okay. Now graphing. First thing, get the inequality in slope-intercept form, if it isn't already. You can see my first example is in slope-intercept form, y, symbol, mx plus b. The second one isn't yet. Graph the boundary line is step two. Okay, That means plot your y-intercept, count off your slope, and then determine what kind of a line you're going to be using. Will it be a solid line or a dashed line? Okay. And the last step is to shade the plane above or below the line. Okay. When you're describing it, it's basically four steps. Plot the y-intercept, count off the slope, tell me which kind of line we're using, tell me if we're shading above or below. So, first inequality here is in slope-intercept form. That is y is less than mx plus b. That's fine. 
Okay, so to graph it, and I'm gonna say out loud the four steps that you would write down while I physically do it. So, step one, plot the y-intercept, which is at four. From there, count up three and write one for the slope. One, two, three, one. Connect those lines with a dashed line because the inequality does not have an or equal to. When you do this, by the way, you have to go edge to edge of the graph. So you do need to go all the way top and bottom. Step four is to shade. Because this is a less than inequality, we shade below the line. And there we go. For the last example, we actually have to do a little bit of math first because this isn't slope intercept form. So the first thing we need to do is subtract 3x from each side. That gets us 2y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 6. Remember, we're always going to slide the x term in front of the number term. And then we have to divide everything by 2. Everything. So that gets me y is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves x plus 3. Okay. Now that I've got slope-intercept form, I can graph. So step 1, plot the y-intercept, which is positive 3. From there, count off the slope, which is down 3, right 2. Those lines are connected with a solid line because this inequality has the or equal to on it. So again, you do need to go edge to edge of the grid. And step four, shade. This is a greater than inequality, so we're going to shade above that line. If you're going to print these out and actually graph these to turn them in, obviously, am I going to expect the Perfect shading, no. Reasonable is good enough. But again, my solutions for the practice problems, I'm going to upload a document that's going to just describe the process of graphing. And that's what you're going to have to do for me on the quiz. So please do check out the practice solutions so you know what I'm looking for on the quiz. And in terms of your assignment, you've got your choices. You can either do it and print everything out, print out coordinate planes and upload the images, or you can use the description process that I use in the practice solutions.